Hey guys, welcome back. This is Phil from OnTheCage.com. Today we're going to take a look at LG's flagship smartphone, V30. First off, it's got a great build quality. It's really well built while being very thin and incredibly light in the same time. As always for a recent LG flagship smartphone, it's IP68 water and dust resistant and also mil-spec certified, making it theoretically a lot more rugged than the competitors. By the way, they killed the IR blaster, so you cannot use it as a TV remote controller anymore. Next up is the display. LG Display supplied this P-OLED panel, and it has a few issues. I do like the fact that it's almost full of a display, dominating almost all of the front facade right there. The brightness and color accuracy aren't the best, but it's okay. They finally included the screen color mode, which is really good. You can control between the normal, best for movies, best for photo, best for web, and custom, so you can choose between the color temperature and each of the RGB levels. But you start noticing a problem when you darken the screen a little bit. The black level and the darker colors are not equal from spot to spot. It might not sound like a big issue, but you'll start noticing it as soon as you go to bed, darken your screen, and start your late night web surfing adventure. This is a serious issue that will annoy you more often than not. But perhaps the most important part about the V30 is the camera or the cameras. This is the world's first f1.6 lens that is supposed to take really bright photos in a low lighting conditions. And sadly enough, the result isn't that satisfying. It doesn't really give that good of a low lighting photos. Some level of details are there, but color accuracy is definitely on the worst side. And the problem only gets worse as soon as you switch to the front facing camera. There's a teeny tiny front facing camera right there, and it takes horrible photos in a low lighting conditions. In the brighter ones, it's okay. In darker environments, the photos are gonna look either smushed, out of focus, shaken, or all of three. Another part that I don't like is the camera app itself. It's got most 15 of the comprehensive options that are not arranged in any specific order. This is auto stills, this is manual stills, and this is manual video. And then right next to the auto stills, there's cine video. And right next to that is food photo. And slow-mo video is right there in the middle of nowhere. They could have put it in some order or group them or at least, I don't know, color them depending on the photos or videos, but they didn't. They just lied it on right there. Don't get me wrong, I'm not calling it a horrible camera experience. It's, it's a good camera, and I especially like the wide lens right there, although I think telephoto lens with 2x zoom is more useful on a mobile phones, but I guess that's a matter of choice. The video camera is also really powerful. It supports lock mode. Uh, you can apply the display LUT. There are actually numbers of the profiles or LUTs you can apply to the log video, which is the first on the mobile phone. I enjoyed all these powerful features, but I think LG could have focused on the more important factors like better front-facing camera. So the camera might have been a little disappointing, but you can turn on the Hi-Fi Quad DAC to listen to the high-quality music. They upgraded the software so you can choose between sound process, abnormal, enhanced, detailed, live, and bass. And that's not all. You can choose between digital filter of short, sharp and slow, each giving you a little different sounds. But I was rather disappointed with that mono speaker. It doesn't have the stereo speaker at this size of a phone, and the speaker itself gets squeaky as soon as you turn off the volume, like, I don't know, halfway through the full volume. And also, I wish the earphone jack was at the bottom so the cable lies down like this rather than tangling up there. But some people actually do prefer it on top so they could listen to music while they're charging their phone. So I guess that's a matter of taste. Aside from all that multimedia function, the phone itself has Snapdragon 835 octa-core processor, 4 gigabytes of RAM, and 64 gigabytes of storage, 128 if you're getting the V30+. Plus. Overall, launching the app and switching between those were pretty snappy. It was, it's a solid performer, and LG improved a lot on temperature and throttling control. And now that they got the hardware right, you kind of start noticing some of the glitches in the software. Firstly, I had a random system UI force closes. Maybe it's the apps that I use, but I've never experienced that aside from a Xiaomi. And despite having rather spacious 4GB of RAM, it gave me a random app refreshes when I'm multitasking and also ability to scroll capture your screen given through the Capture Plus app was not available in all of the apps. It only works on some of the LG apps and on Google Chrome. And then when you want to share a file or a photo, there is no Wi-Fi Direct option on sharing. You have to install a third-party app to utilize Wi-Fi Direct. And since the phone has 18 to 9 display ratio, most of the videos shot in 16 to 9 on YouTube are going to have the little space on the left and right side corner. Samsung Galaxy's offer a button to stretch the video to fill in the whole display, but this guy still does not. 
And going back to the camera app, the shutter button is not in the center, but rather a little bit under that. So you have to focus when you want to take a photo with that shutter key. And then maybe this is my personal taste, but the overall icons and the colors look a little bit outdated with the little 3D-ish icons there, but flat icons here, and the color tones are not exactly up to the current trend. Oh, by the way, LG killed the second display that was available in the V10 and V20, and they compensated that with the floating bar right there. You can open and close it, and you can swipe between the features that are more limited than that was available in the previous devices. And the thing about that button is that it opens whenever you just simply tap on it. So when you're surfing the web, you just happen to tap it, and it just opens and closes on its own, and it's not always fun. Compared to that, Samsung put the edge panels on the side, in which you have to swipe open so you don't accidentally open it. I wish LG has made this that way as well. It does give some space when a keyboard opens and gets back to a spot when the keyboard closes, but I don't think that's enough. Aside from that, some of the features that I did like is this part where you can scroll between notification, quick toggle, and music control. And also they got the taptic feedback really up to the point. When you slide from the shutter, it gives a very delicate taptic feedback. And also vibration for this opening and closing really does feel like it's opening and closing. And now with this much of features, you might be worried about that battery. And you shouldn't be because it gives you constantly of six and a half hours of screen on time. Considering the battery performance of V20 or the G6, this is really, really big improvement. I don't know what exactly is the trick. Maybe it is the power efficient OLED panel, but whatever, I don't care. It's a great improvement. Charging through that USB Type-C port might not sound that fast at all because it takes hour and 15 minutes, but at hour and a half, it gives you 97% full battery. So I guess that's fast enough. What was not fast enough, surprisingly, was that wireless charging. It supports Qi standard, and I tested it with the LG Zone Libera charger, and it took three hours and 20 minutes. Yeah, I don't think I'll be using wireless charging that often. And now, to conclusion. First off, you have to get something really clear. This is not a Galaxy Note 8 competitor. This competes with Galaxy S8 Plus. Keeping that in mind, the V30 is a huge leapfrog for LG. It's one of the best phones that they've ever built, and I do like most of the aspects. However, it has critical flaws and very important parts, the display and the software. If I had to use the V30, I think I would have dealt with it. But when Galaxy S8 Plus is currently 725 bucks at most stores, and this thing is $830, I wouldn't suggest V30 unless you're a serious audiophile. Don't get me wrong, it definitely is a nice start for LG. I don't know, first ever in seven years since they started building an Android smartphone, but it's a great start, finally. And if they keep up the great work like this for another two, three generations, maybe I'll start to trust LG built devices. But for now, I really wouldn't suggest this over Galaxy S8 Plus unless you can get this for, I don't know, 200 bucks cheaper than the Galaxy S8 Plus. So that was LG V30. Thank you always for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. You can always meet us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. We'll see you guys later. Ciao.